So students, if you have a project and it has survived the kiln, then you are going to start sanding it, whatever your project is. You will need a glaze mat for sanding. You will need sandpaper for sanding. You can always put the sandpaper back once you're done if it still has got grit. But if it's something like this and there's not much to it, please just take it over here to the garbage can and throw it away. That's that. That's right. So, you'll take your mat over to your project and you will take your project and you will start sanding it till it's absolutely smooth, absolutely smooth. And then you will start glazing. So, you've all seen my video on sanding, so I'm gonna make a new short video on glazing. All right, lantern people. When your lantern is smooth all the way around, everywhere has been sanded smooth. There is no rough spots, things like that. This one needs maybe a little bit more sanding, just a little bit. Uh, but once it's all sanded smooth, you will be able to start glazing. So that is what we're going to do today. Uh, you also need to have your lid smooth as well. Uh, but you don't have to have them at the same time. So if you just have this portion done, that's perfect. If you just have this portion done, that's all right too. So sand these on the glaze mat. And then once you are ready to glaze, you're gonna come over here to our glaze area. And as you remember, seventh and eighth graders, this is the color. And that's what it's gonna look like after it's fired. Uh, well, this is three coats on each one, okay? Um, the nice thing about our lanterns, we don't have to make these food safe, so like our mugs last year. So no one's gonna be drinking out of them, no one's gonna eat off of them. So you do not, do not need three layers. You can have one layer, which is sort of like a watercolory look. You can have two layers that looks more like uh, acrylic paint. And then three layers is very, very vibrant. Um, the only reason we do three layers on the mugs is because we want to make sure that it's absolutely food safe. So no one gets sick when using it to eat or drink on. But since no one is eating or drinking off this, we can just paint it one layer, be done. We can paint it two layers, be done. It just depends on how vibrant and what you want it to look like, okay? So when you're ready, you're gonna come over here and you are going to grab one of these. This is our wet sponge. And what you'll do is take it over to the sink and you'll just run it under the sink for a second to make sure that it is drenched with water and then you wring it out because we don't want a ton of sopping water on there. And then you're gonna take it to your project. I'm not gonna use this person's project because that's their project. I'm gonna take this piece that I lightly sanded earlier and what you're gonna do is you're just going to wipe it off. And you can see that changes color when you're wiping it off. And we're just trying to get all the dust off of this, okay? So I'm just getting the dust off of that and then if i need more i'll just take this back to the sink just bring it out real quick come back and i will dust off the other parts like so just like this and make sure we're getting all that dust off wherever we're putting glaze we need to make sure that it doesn't have any dust on it and you can see because i'm not drenching it in water it's going to dry back really quickly is going to dry back really quickly. And I know it will be dry when it starts looking like that on this side. You can see there's a wet spot and that's the dry area. So it's going to dry out in front of your eyes. I'm gonna take this back and well, it's drying. I can do a favor for the next person and just clean it out for them. And then I can put this back in the wet sponge station right here. Well, that's drying, it might need couple minutes or so, but we want this to be absolutely dry all the way through it. So if you took this over the sink and soaked it, uh, it might need a full day to dry. So this might take a couple minutes to dry. Um, I'm going to pause the video and come back to it. All right, students, I am back. It's been a few minutes, but it's still not fully dry. You can sort of see it's still a little bit dark. Uh, if I started glazing on this wet side, um, it's not gonna be dry enough to adhere the glaze. So I'll keep waiting. All right, students, I've come back. It's been several more minutes. This thing is still not dry and I can feel it. It's still wet to the touch. It's kind of damp, whereas this side is super dry. Um, this side is cooler, so I can still 
tell that it is still moist. This stuff likes to really hold on to moisture. So I would not, would not suggest just soaking this and letting it sit because like this has been what, 10 minutes so far and it's not fully dry yet. So I would let it still dry and wait. Uh, this is a good time to like, I don't know, work on other things that you need to help someone else. You can also clean while you're waiting. Um, but yeah, there's nothing you can do but wait. So I would suggest not soaking your project, but just wiping it with a wet sponge that has been wrung out. All right, three minutes later, it's looking like it's dry. It's still feeling kind of damp compared to the other side. So I will keep letting it dry. All right, students, it's been about 16, 17 minutes. This is now dry to the touch on both sides. It doesn't feel cold or damp anymore. That means it's time to start glazing this. So what I'm gonna do is come over here and pick which color I want to use. Do you hear what I said? One color, color, color. So we have some three of each color. Um, there are some with two. That means we're running out of that color. So those are our most limited, as QVC hosts would say. Um, but you can come over here, grab a bottle. Remember, uh, we're not shaking it, but make sure the lid's on so it doesn't spill all over. And then you're going to walk this back to your spot like so. Put it down. Then you're going to come over here and you're going to pick a brush. Are you doing small little details? Small brush is perfect for that. Are you doing medium details? We have medium brushes for that. They also cover really good far areas. We also have big brushes for big areas. So depending on what you're doing, you pick the brush for your job. You can only use one brush at a time and we only have enough brushes for one person to have one brush at a time. So pick the brush for the job. I'm gonna pick a medium brush and you can see this one's quite dirty already. It is stiff, there's stuff in there. If I do this, it's kind of not bending. So what I'll do is come over here to the bucket, rinse it out real quick, and then I will get some paper towel and just pinch and pull, clean the brush, ta-da, a brand new clean brush to use, okay? It's very moldable, it's very flexible, it is a beautiful brush. That's just how we clean our brushes here. So I have our glaze right here. I have our brush right here. And what I'm going to do, as you remember, is open it up like so. I'm going to put the handle all the way to the bottom. I have a paper towel. If I need more, I will go get some more paper towel. And then what I will do is make sure it's on the bottom, that the bottom of the handle is touching. There we go. The bottom of the bottom. And I'm going to stir. And I'm going to stir slowly. We do not want to shake it because if we shake it, that creates air bubbles. And air bubbles create spots on our glaze that does not adhere. Remember, I am also getting the glass from the bottom. I need to stir the glass all the way to the top because this has been sitting for a while. I need to take the pigment all the way to the bottom. So I just need to stir. And I'll probably need to stir for like about a minute. Now that it's done, I have all this glaze on my handle. What I'm going to do is just pinch and pull the glaze down back into the bottle, saving it. So it's dripping back into the bottle so that we can use more glaze. This is how you save some glaze. And then the rest of the glaze is just gonna be on my paper towel so I can clean it off. Now my handle is clean, my brush tip is clean, I am ready to paint. And so what I'll do is just dip my brush into the glaze and we want some brush hair showing. We do not want it to go all the way to the metal. Um, this is where the brush attaches, and if we can keep the paint or the glaze away from where it attaches, it makes your brush uh, last a lot longer. So I'm going to paint this on where I want those colors. And I am going to try to get everywhere. And if you see right there, I just went over this little spot right there, but it didn't fill in right in that area. You can still see it's a little bit white. So I need to go back in and I can dab and fill in that gap. And I can just paint. I can paint around things. I can paint over things. Now, this is just one layer. 
So if I wanted, let's say, a patchwork, let's say I am doing like checkered patterns over here. I could do checkered patterns. That's one layer right here, okay? Uh, if I wanna do two layers of these things, I need to wait for them to fully dry. So me just going back over this area, that just counts as one layer. So I am going to put this on. I will wait for it to fully dry. This one's almost dry. You can sort of see it. There's a pale side and a dark side. That pale side is the dry side. This darker side is the wet side. So I'll just wait for this all to be pale and then I can paint over it for my second layer if I wanted to, okay? So just waiting. You can talk to your neighbors. How was your weekend? What did you do last night? Uh, have you played this video game? Are you watching that show? Who's dating who? Um, did you read the news? Uh, I don't know. Things like that while you wait for it to dry. And it will slowly dry. And we're getting there. You can sort of see it's blending in in its color. Uh, it's taking out the moisture to dry. And once it's fully dry, then I can put another layer and then that counts as two. If you want to do that. Remember, we're not eating off of this, so we don't. We can leave parts of this white if we want to. That is totally fine um, because we're not eating off of it. So if you wanted a white or a cream color to interact with your pattern, you could have that. Just know it's not gonna be shiny uh, unless we put a transparent glaze over it. And that is something we can do if you wanted to. So go back into the glaze. This one's fully dry now. Uh, you can see I dripped on the bottle. I can just clean that off. I can, if I'm dripping on my brush, I can just pull it off on the edge right there. And then I can just go right over it again and now this part is going to be brighter than that part. Even though I brushed on two sets of glaze on this one, it was fully wet at the time, and so that counts as one layer. This one was dry, so when I put this wet layer on top of it, it's going to stick to that dry layer, and that's gonna make it more vibrant and pop, okay? So, you're just gonna paint up your uh, lantern however you want, wherever you want, uh, except for the bottom. We do not wanna paint the bottom of your lantern because it'll stick to the shelf and then I'll have to break it off. Also, think about not painting the pinky width of the bottom of your lantern all the way around, just so that no glaze drips down and fuses this to the shelf, okay? So, that is how you paint a lantern. Once you are done, you're going to clean off your brush by pinching and pulling, pinching and pulling, pinching and pulling, like so, and it should be clean. You can take it over here. You can rinse it out over the faucet real quick, rinse, and then, put it back in the right container. This one is the medium brush. I'm just pinching and pulling the moisture out of there and then reshaping the brush so that it looks like a brush. And once it dries, people will want to use that more. And I'll put that back. Then I will make sure the lid goes back onto my container. I will screw it on nice and tight. If any of this spills, Whoever spilt it is responsible, so I'll take it back. I'll put it back in its section where it goes, all lately lined up. It says lilac, 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 that's lilac, and so on and so on. Then I'll put my project that I am working on, not on the shelves over there, but back in your bins. Whatever table you're at, you have these B bins. This is where you are going to put things that have been fired as well. Uh, let's see, I have some sixth graders who have done that. See, even things that are fired perfectly. That's where you're gonna put that. Um, then, once you have put your project where it goes, you are going to make sure that you put your glaze mat where it goes. If there's any glaze on it, you can clean it up so we don't get more glaze on it. You could pick this up, bring it over here, and lay it down nice and smooth and neatly so that it doesn't get all frumpy. And then you can clean up your table as always.